Okay, so when Geekworm sent me this X1003 NVMe board with a very, very short cable, they also sent me a load of other cables at my request because I wanted to try possibly doing something with this case and uh, mounting the NVMe drive on the outside because I'm often swapping between NVMe drives. So let's have a look and see if it affects the speed. So I've already got the two centimetre cable fitted I've got a 3cm, a 5cm and an 8cm, but let's test the 2cm first. So let's launch Raspberry Pi Diagnostics. And I'll run three tests and take the fastest of the three. Okay, so that's the first three tests and I'm testing this at PCIe Gen 3 speed, so let's just double check that. So in firmware and config.txt. Yeah, PCIe Gen 3. So let's close that one. So I generally go for random read speed as being the one that runs an operating system the best. And you can see the third test is the best one, 52,681. Everything else is pretty consistent. So let's delete these two. And I'll do the same with all the sizes. So let's save that and shut this down and fit another cable. Let's get this one out, and we're going up to the three centimeter. Pop that in nice and straight, and we've got a little bit of a bow there, so it doesn't fit this one particularly well. This one's definitely better for this particular board. Okay, so another three tests. Which one is the fastest so far? So five two five one two is the fastest. We've got some better sequential write speeds. Look, random write speeds better. But the main one I go for, as I say, is random read speed. So let's delete these two. So very little in it at the moment. Which is what I'm hoping for, because I don't want to change to an 8 centimeter cable if it's going to lose loads of speed. But that sort of speed isn't going to be noticeable. So here's the 5 centimeter cable in place. And it didn't boot first of all, but not to worry, it was just that I hadn't put it in quite straight enough. So let's launch diagnostics again. So let's have a look. Uh, so fastest random read speed, 52, 52, 8, 5, 1, 52, 3, 4, 5. So it's this one, and also that's faster on random write speed. Now I have a little bit of a theory that if you can get the cable further away from the components, uh, it may be that it's got less interference. And in this case, sequential write speed is the fastest so far Random write speed is equal to the three centimeter and random read speed is the fastest. So the five centimeter is currently in the lead. Right, let's fit the long cable. And it does look very long on this particular board. Nice and easy to fit with the long cable. And also, you know, when it's in this casing and the board is on the outside, again, there'll be a bit more shielding from the main components. You never know. Okay, so that's all three tests done, and uh, it's nice to see some real consistency in here. You can see these two sequential write speeds exactly the same speed. This sequential write speed is the same speed as the three and the two centimeter. But let's concentrate on those random read speeds. So 52512 is the fastest. So let's get rid of that and see where we come, 52512, or same as the three centimeter, 52681, but not as fast as the two centimeter, but the fastest is the five centimeter. And you can see random write speed wasn't as fast on the eight centimeter, and sequential write speed, yeah, pretty good, because it was the same as the two and the three. So not enough to worry about so yeah 52512 compared to the fastest one we had 52851 it does vary a bit if you keep doing tests so for me it's not making enough difference for me to worry about it so if i can fit a five centimeter i'll fit it with that uh, but if not then i'll use the longer eight centimeter it depends which one looks better with the casing okay so i need to save all of those i'll put those in the description as well so when it comes to what boards I can use with this longer cable, because it's going to be further away from the Pi, it can't use GPIO pins. So this particular board, 
plugs in via GPIO pins, so that's how it's powered, uh, and it has the PCIe cable, so I can't use that one. Uh, this one is the same with the GPIO pins and the PCIe cable. Once again, this has the full set of GPIO pins and uh, isn't going to work for this particular use. Another one from 52Pi with the GPIO pins. Uh, but then we have uh, this one, which, oh no, that still uses GPIO pins. This sort of clamps together. I've got separate videos on all of these boards. Uh, then I've got this one, which goes underneath, which I was hoping to get inside here, but I couldn't manage to get it inside there. And also, even if I could, then I wouldn't be able to get access to the drive. So it's really down to this one. Then I thought to myself, what happens if you try and plug these in without the GPIOs connected? So you can see the GPIOs are down here. So it's only the PCIe cable. Well, in the case of this one, it doesn't boot. Let's try this 52 Pi one again, GPIO pins not connected. Oh, that one boots. No, nope, this one doesn't either. Yeah, that one's booted as well. So both 52 Pi ones do. Even though they have the GPIO pins, they still boot without it. So it's down to these four that boot with just the PCIe cable connected, don't use extra power. And uh, I'm probably just gonna go for this one. I just think it's probably the most sensible one for this build. I was hoping that this one was going to work, even though the orientation would have been a bit weird. So if I pop that on like that, it does mean the drive would be coming this way. So if I used a 2280 drive, it would be sticking out the side. But I like the fact that this doesn't spring up. So the design that you get with these, the way that you kind of have to use something to retain it, otherwise it springs up but I have my 3D printed clips anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. Yeah, this is definitely the one that is gonna go on here. So with the Pi in place, I can see where the SD card slot's gonna be, because I still use an SD card slot, and I can see where that cable's gonna be. So just need to make sure I'm clear from the SD card slot. Uh, remember now, it's not the easiest SD card slot to get to, but uh, I think probably yeah, maybe, maybe here is about right. I wonder if I could just mark it. Yeah, that's okay. So I've mounted these three on and I've just put basically bolts inside here to secure it in place. And I've decided to do it this way to give it a bit of space so that it's not bang up against the case just so there's a bit more chance for it to be cooled better. Bit of thermal paste for the ice tower cooler. So the five centimeter one is just gonna to be too short, so I'm gonna use the eight centimeter one, but I've just realized that I can't actually get this in now that the ice tower cooler is on there, so I'm gonna to have to take that off just to get the PCIe cables in. So it's this way around. Right, so I've gotta get this in here without kinking that cable. Oh, it's not too bad at all. Yeah, that's okay. And that cable tucks nicely up inside because it's the longer cable. Let's pop a drive in and secure that up. Yeah, happy enough with that. So this will definitely be my main setup for my Pi 5 for a while until something else comes along. But uh, yeah, really pleased with, with how it's turned out. The SD card slot is a bit of a pain uh, in that you have to use tweezers to get in and out of it. Um, but changing the NVMe drive is really, really simple. And because it's on the outside of the case, it's gonna stay nice and cool. The fan almost never comes on, so I'm really pleased with that. So thanks very much to Geekworm for sending me these longer PCIe cables. They've been very much appreciated. And uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.